Next, we have the last lightning talk of today. Um, the talk title is Reactive Robot, fa uh, fastest way to turn robot framework projects into event-driven services. Let's welcome to the stage Yusuf Khan Beirik. Beirik. <laughs> have fun. Thank you. All right. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Yusuf, and I'm working as a full stack software developer at an Ocean GmbH. Uh, at, in this lightning talk, I will introduce to you a project I developed called Reactive Robot. Uh, here you can find my GitHub username, and also you can reach me with the same username on Robot Framework Select channel. Let's look at the agenda first. Uh, first of all, we will look into the project overview to answer the motivation behind the project, um, as well as the features it provides. Then we will dive into how to configure it by examining the high-level architecture and the individual components of it. Then uh, we will look, into how, uh, look at the built-in library it provides to your robot scripts. And finally, we will look into two real-world examples. Let's start with the overview. Uh, the Reactive Robot project is a project aims to uh, trigger robots with incoming messages from event sources like Kafka, RabbitMQ, or MQTT. But it's not limited with them. It can be easily extendable with custom implementations. Uh, also, it provides reactivity and ability to create event-driven services with robot scripts. And finally, it extends robot framework capabilities by implementing the continuous testing concept. Uh, let's continue with the configuration. Uh, as can be seen on the diagram, the high-level architecture of Reactive Robot consists of three major components. Uh, the event source, the configuration files, and robot files. Uh, what these named arrows indicate, uh, the name of the object used in configuration file, which we will look into on further slides. And on the next slide, we will look into where this Reactive Robot configuration file stands for in your project. Uh, the configuration file is a YAML format file, uh, which lives inside your project to create the entry point for your robot service. Of course, the configuration file can be stored anywhere on your system, as long as you have correct paths for your robot scripts or your robot bindings. Uh, but conventionally, storing it inside the project would be beneficial, let's say, for Dockerizing. Uh, let's dive into the configuration file more deeply. Uh, service name and the ser service version properties are for declaring the identity and the versioning of the process. And this information will be prompted immediately when you start the service. Uh, the connector object, as we mentioned before, has properties to confirm connections to the event sources. Uh, the driver property of, of connector is the Python class which will be injected by Reactive Robot to achieve connections to the event source. In addition to the already existing MQTT, RabbitMQ, and Kafka connector classes, it is easy to implement your custom connect connector class and use it as long as that class and the Reactive Robot are in the same Python path. Uh, the connection URL property of the connector declares the schema, host, and port information of the event source. And the arcs property of the connector is also an object we will, uh, which will be passed to the connector class's initializer method as keyword arguments. And the next core object is binding object. It is a list of objects which consists a display name, a topic, and robot object. The name property uh, of the binding is for declaring the display name uh, and the, the Topic, and the topic is simply for the subscription. Uh, finally, the robot object consists of the robot file and the runtime arguments of the robot. Let's continue with the built-in library. When we trigger our robots with an event, we certainly want to know what was the topic and what was the payload, right? To achieve that with ease, installing the Reactive Robot also provides a built-in library to easily parse the incoming payload and the, in, and the topic using keywords in your robot files. 
On the right hand side, uh, there's an example robot script which demonstrates exactly this. Uh, all you need to do, including the React robot forward slash lib.py in your robot scripts and two additional keywords, get reactive robot payload and get reactive robot topic will be available, ready to use for that purpose. Now let's look at the real world examples. Uh, in an ocean, we are producing wireless and battery-less uh, sensor devices. And we are also providing a software solution named an ocean IoT connector to serve ready-to-use IoT data on cloud. And as can be seen uh, on, our, on the dia diagram, our example have three actors, uh, physical devices, the IoT connector software, and the MQTT broker on some cloud, let's say GCP. Uh, and this diagram demonstrates we will use reactive robot connecting by uh, reactive robot by connecting our robot project to the MQTT broker that an ocean IoT connector egresses data into. Then, uh, with a single binding, we will implement a sensor health service using sensor health that robot file. On the left hand side, you are seeing the reactive robot configuration file and the right hand side, the robot script, which will be triggered by incoming device events. Uh, let's focus on the configuration first. Uh, we have one binding named sensor health processor. And we are subscribing a wildcard topic to match every device. Uh, we have health, health processor robot and dash dash R, RPA argument. Uh, for this binding, we are triggering the health processor robot file. And on the robot file, uh, first we are identifying the device from incoming topic, then uh, storing the RSSI value of the, of the device. And on the other task, we are calculating and publishing the average, average from uh, previously received values to the same MQTT broker. Uh, we can think, uh, we can consider this implementation as a micro batch processing as well. Uh, let's next let's implement a continuous testing scenario on same same software solution like exactly before we have physical devices and IoT connector software and uh, MQTT broker on the cloud but this time we will configure it to test the solution the software solution every time if it is egressing the valid valid data or not using egress validator that robot script we are again binding to a wildcard topic, as you can see on the left hand side, the configuration file, uh, to match every device to trigger our egress validator robot. And in the robot script, we are importing the built in library first, then, with the help of get reactive robot payload uh, keyword, we are parsing the incoming device data and finally validating the egress data from device has correct, correct schema or not. Uh, that was all for my presentation. For further information, you can check the project page on GitHub uh, to see example configurations for MQTT, uh, RabbitMQ, and Kafka, as well as the examples for Dockerizing your robot framework projects as services. Thank you. Thank you, Yusuf. Yusuf will be available for questions in the speaker's corner and, yeah. and on the online platform. Thank you, Thank Yusuf. You.